Hello and welcome back to another KCC video, I'm Rob, and today we'll be jumping into Nuclear Revenge. Before we start, please hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you know when the next video goes live. Our story today comes to us from Lammy2175. What's his most prized possession? I will destroy it. Let's jump right in. Kind of a long one, but on the plus side, the only story I am likely to ever post here. This happened back in 1989. The story involves my stepdad, biological dad, and my sister. The person who exacted the revenge has passed now, so it should be safe to relate. I hope it meets the requirement for nuclear revenge. It is a revenge that would warrant prison time, I believe. I was living outside the country when this happened, so my sister relayed all of this information to me about a year after it happened. We recently got together again and went over the events again. My biological parents married when they were very young, and Donald was still in law school. The marriage lasted long enough to produce two children. They didn't waste time in those days. My sister, who is 14 months my elder, and myself. They were divorced before I was born. Donald was a serial cheater, a pathological liar, and a total a-hole. He still is, at least a liar and an a-hole. He's in his mid-70s now, so maybe not so much with the cheating. The fact that he is still working as a lawyer, I think, is indicative that he was never a good one, as he evidently doesn't have enough to retire. I've looked up reviews of him online, and it's funny to see that most reviewers say that he is not only a terrible lawyer, but a horrible person. When Sis was 22, she was a single mother, and my nephew, her son, was around three. Her company transferred her to another state. She discovered that Donald lived in a town near her new work location and thought that he might be able to help her get her bearings in a new place. For a short time when we were teenagers, he had some sporadic involvement in our lives after moving to a neighboring city. It was mostly him trying to impress us with how cool and rich he thought we should think he was. So, though it had been a few years since she had seen him, it's not like they were complete strangers. In any case, Donald agreed to let Sis move into his apartment with him, his girlfriend at that time, of course, many years his junior, and her nine-month-old child, not Donald's, until she was able to find her own place. He also offered to allow her to keep her belongings in his storage unit. Sis took him up on his offer. Never did Donald make any reference to being paid for the use of the storage unit, or paying for utilities at the apartment. Sis stayed three months and did her best to get out as quickly as she could and as far as she could once she became more familiar with the area. Living with him was hard. Did I mention he is an a-hole? And her young son would find his pregnant lady sexy mags around the apartment. This is obviously pre-internet. Donald's young girlfriend was able to help with babysitting, something Sis paid her for. So Sis gets her own apartment, but all of her things, her son's toys, furniture, her furniture, household items, everything but her own bed was still in the storage unit. So she called him to figure out how she could get her things back, but he seemed to want to hang on to them for some reason. He said, you owe girlfriend money for babysitting and you can't get your things back until you pay her. She said, have you talked to her? I have paid her everything I owed her. He puts down the phone and talks to girlfriend and she confirms that she has been paid. He then says, well, you owe a third of the utilities for the time you were here. She reminded him that he had never said anything about that. He gets a little heated and she's feeling desperate and angry and shouts an accusation of something he did to her when she was very young, a totally different story. He responds, have you ever told anyone that? She says, no. He says, if you ever do, I will wring your effing neck. And the conversation ends. She had given up and thought she would never see her things again. About 20 minutes later, she gets a call from an acquaintance who had actually gone on one or two dates with Donald before she met my sister. He tells Sis that Donald had just called her, asking if Sis had ever told her anything that he might have done to Sis, hinting at the accusation Sis had made. Sis had never told anyone, and the acquaintance told Donald as much. Sis later calls my stepdad, whom we have always considered to be our dad. He is the only father we knew growing up, and he was in the picture since before we were old enough to remember. He married my mom when I was an infant and my sister a toddler. They were married 40 years until my mom's death. The guy absolutely had a lot of faults, passed in 2017, and we often felt better when he wasn't around, but he tried, and it's not easy raising someone else's kids. 
and he was our dad as far as we were concerned. He actually legally adopted us. He had a lot of issues, but he absolutely hated to see someone being taken advantage of because they were in a weaker position. In other words, he hated a bully, and Donald was being a bully. When I was in the first grade, I rode a school bus with middle and high school students. There were a couple of kids who would bully me. When he found out, he confronted the bully's dads, and it ended. Another time, I was in the third grade and driving somewhere with him in his pickup around town, and he saw two young teenagers destroying a bicycle that he assumed they had stolen. He stopped and confronted them with his big framing hammer, a Vaughn 16-ouncer. I have one like it in his honor. Years later, he broke my mom out of a mental institution by threatening the director or some doctor, I'm not sure, I was young, with that same hammer. Yes, we were a fun family. Anyway, when Sis calls him explaining that Donald is holding all of her possessions hostage and she doesn't know what to do, he tells her that he knows several Crips who would be happy to rough him up and wouldn't even want to be paid. They would do it for pleasure. Dad was very bothered that Donald was keeping his grandson's things from him and wanted to hurt Donald. Sis declines this offer. He then asks her, what's the thing that he values most in this world? She responds, his car. His car at that point was a Porsche he had purchased new just a few years before. It wasn't quite the absolute entry-level model, but pretty close. Of course, he had all kinds of arguments about why it was actually better than the more expensive ones. Obviously, it was red. Dad was trying to come up with a way not only to get revenge, but to scare Donald enough to force him to give Sis back her things. Sis said she was fine with whatever he wanted to do if it got her belongings back but wanted to make sure none of it could be traced back to her. Nothing happens until about a month later, and Donald calls Sis out of the blue, as if nothing had ever happened, and asks, Hey, when would you like to come get your things? How about this Saturday? Evidently, he had some change of heart that is unexplained to this day. She said, Sure. She didn't trust him, so she didn't want to go alone. She was able to get a male friend to go with her. She gets a U-Haul and just picks up her stuff and gets out. That very evening, she tried several times to call Dad to let him know that she'd got her things back and all was well. No need for any drastic measures. But it was too late. The wheels had been set in motion. He never answers the phone. Remember, this is pre-cell phone days, so when you're not at home, you don't answer. Sis calls Mom, who was living separately from Dad for a time, it's complicated, telling her she can't reach Dad. Mom says Dad is sick, and that's probably why he's not answering his phone. At 11.30 p.m., Sis gets a call from Donald's girlfriend who asks her, What are you doing? Sis replies, I'm at home in bed. Why? She responds, Someone just blew up Donald's car. Sis's heart drops. She obviously knows who did it. The police ask Donald who would want to do this to him, and he answers Sis's name. So she becomes suspect number one. Sis asks girlfriend if Donald is scared. Girlfriend says yes, they are spending the night in a hotel. Fortunately, the call from girlfriend to Sis just a few minutes after the explosion gave Sis her alibi. Sis lived over 30 minutes away and could not have answered her home phone if she had been the one to ignite the bomb. The bomb did its job well. It turned the Porsche into an unrecognizable wreck, took out the adjacent car, the Porsche was parked at the end of the carport so there was only one car parked next to it, and destroyed many feet of the carport above both cars. I'm guessing the tank in the Porsche was near full. Just after Sis gets off the phone, she calls Mom, telling her that someone blew up Donald's car, and she thinks it was Dad. While she's on the phone with Mom, another call comes in, Call waiting, a fancy feature in the days of landlines. It's dad. He says mysteriously, There is a box outside your door. Bring it in. You never talk to me tonight. Sis is a little afraid to open the box, but it turns out to be just some of her son's items that he had left with his grandpa, clothes, and toys. Months later at Christmas, Sis asked dad about it and he confessed. Turns out, he really was very sick physically when he pulled that stunt. Sis was touched that he would go to so much effort and risk jail time for her, all while being ill. She asked him if he was scared driving back. He said yes, and that every headlight behind him he took to be a cop until he reached the state line. Sis found out from girlfriend that the cop said the job was very amateur, certainly not the work of professional, but hey, it did the job. 
Dad told Sis he had asked a co-worker who was once a member of the aforementioned Crips about how to make a car bomb, and she instructed him. He always did love blowing things up. When I was 13, we bonded over crumbling up the old colored sparklers into powder. I don't think they make the colored ones anymore, but they burned hotter. Funneling the powder into a spent CO2 cartridge, using another sparkler as a fuse, and making bombs powerful enough to blow up those old metal milk cans that hold a few gallons. It was the 4th of July. Anyway, Sis says it was some sort of Molotov cocktail stuffed into the tailpipe, but I'm not sure how that would work. My idea of a Molotov cocktail is a 750 mil sized bottle, like a wine bottle or a fifth of booze, which would not fit into the tailpipe of a four-cylinder Porsche, I wouldn't think. I'm guessing the diameter is no more than two inches, not big enough to fit such a bottle. Maybe he used a smaller bottle, or simply a smaller container of some kind, not a bottle, filled with something very ignitable. I truly regret not discussing it with him personally, but we weren't close since I left home. If you didn't need him, he had a hard time having a relationship with you. Plus, I was married to a woman for many years who kept me from my parents and siblings, so I don't have better details. Thank God that 25-year marriage is over, and my current wife loves my family. Sorry, but the story is true. One hilarious detail, Donald continued to father offspring and date very young women. His current wife is my age exactly, and he has a daughter many years younger than my youngest child. A couple of years ago, I had a conversation with one of these half-sisters, a marvelous person despite half her DNA. Her mother was never married to Donald, and this sister is the age of my youngest daughter. I told her the story of the exploded Porsche. She found it very amusing because she says Donald loves to tell a story about he was prosecuting some mob bosses and a couple of thugs came to his door trying to threaten him. Of course, being the big, bad, brave man he is, he did not back down. And what was his reward? Those thugs blew up his car. I think it's hilarious that he tells this story to his children, but now they know the truth. He is the biggest BSer I have ever met. Also, due to Donald's allegation that it was my sister who blew up his car, what? Not mobsters, but a 22-year-old girl? The condo association or whatever tried to sue my sister for the damage to the carport. It came to naught. They were grasping at straws because there was no evidence, of course, but it did scare her and cause some anxiety. I think what I'm stuck on is the timing in this story. So Donald called and said to Sis that she could have her things back for absolutely no reason. But then that exact same day as the one where they decided to blow up the car. I just don't see how that works. Maybe it was a huge coincidence, but we have no additional details. Thank you to OP for posting their story in the Nuclear Revenge subreddit. They are linked in the description down below. Please go check them out. Check out one of these other videos, and if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories.